Hey everybody, this is me testing the Google Slides caption feature. I want to see how well it can capture all the words that you see coming in at the bottom of the screen there. Just moving my video a bit. Yeah. So as you can see, I've got Google Slides up and I've turned on the captions using this cool little yellow button. Now, this is only available in the Chrome browser, so you have to be using Chrome. It doesn't work in Safari or Firefox, it's only in Chrome. Once you hit it though in present mode in Google Slides, Google Live transcribes the words that you're saying. Now, you can probably already see some shortcomings. For instance, I don't get punctuation. I can't say, I'd like to make a list of groceries, colon, apples, comma, bananas, comma, and oranges, period. Oh, it did the colon. Apparently that's a relatively <laughs> infrequent word that this recognizes as punctuation, semicolon. Therefore, darn, it doesn't do semicolon either, period. But as you can see, there's no reliable punctuation translation. So the live transcript, the live captions you get are just that. They're just the words that Google hears. It doesn't mark the sentence endings. Also, Google's slide captions don't appear to be recordable. Uh, Google doesn't make a transcript of your words. So it's speak and forget, they're gone. You won't have a list of words for students to go over after you're finished. But it does occur to me that I can do a screenshot like this and then record that video or a screen record, record the video, that'll record the captions there and then if I played that video for students it would be saved for them in the future. I did notice there there was kind of a pause in the transcription so the captions aren't perfect, they drop out every few seconds, not the greatest system. But if you do a screen recording, you can record the video with the captions and display that later on. And everybody can see that rough transcript of what you said, even though you can't edit it or add punctuation, make it perfect. I wanted to do one more thing and do a speed test. Now, I can't read and talk and monitor it at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a passage from my friend Paolo Friere. Boy, it didn't transcribe that well. Paolo Freire, and I'm going to read a pa paragraph or two. I'm going to go quickly, and I'm going to see how well Google Slides does at keeping up with my delivery. Ready, Google? Let's see. Chapter 1. While the problem of humanization has always, from an axiological point of view, been man's central problem, it now takes on the character of an inescapable concern. Concern for humanization leads at once to the recognition of dehumanization, not only as an ontological possibility, but as an historical reality. And as man perceives the extent of dehumanization, he asks himself if humanization is a viable possibility. Within history and concrete objective contexts, both humanization and dehumanization are possibilities for man as an uncompleted being conscious of his incompletion. But while both humanization and dehumanization are real alternatives, only the first is man's vocation. This vocation is constantly negated, yet it is affirmed by that very negation. It is thwarted by injustice, exploitation, oppression, and the violence of the oppressors. It is affirmed by the yearning of the oppressed for freedom and justice, and by their struggle to recover their lost humanity. Thanks for your patience. I'll look at this recording and we'll see how well Google Slides did at transcribing my relatively quick speech.